how many company chairmen would you find doing that? This five-part series provides a unique behind-the-scenes insight into whisky creators Gordon and McPhail in the year of our 125th anniversary, with reflections from people throughout the whisky world. If you look round Murray, you see uh, family firms doing really well with a passion for uh, the products and what they're doing and with a passion for the local area and the local people. The business is called Gordon McPhail of Elgin, so Elgin is our hometown and we work away quietly. We've got cask stocks which cover almost every distillery in Scotland, but we haven't necessarily um, shouted this from the rooftops. It's just not our style. Ourselves at Johnson's and, and Gordon McPhail, we share a, a heritage, we share a, a community that we're, we're embedded in, but we share very similar values as well. We believe in making the very best product we can possibly make. I think if you want to be successful over such a long period of time, you've got to be willing to take a long-term view, you've got to be willing to invest for the future and really not compromise on quality because there'll always be a time when that temptation uh, is there to compromise and to, to try and produce something which is a little bit cheaper. And I think you really need to have those values to persevere and maintain that quality commitment right the way through. If people trust you, they will come to you with respect because they know the values you aspire to. Respect for our products, respect for the, the company and what it's achieved over the many years and respect for the individuals in the company. It's really important to us that people have a good character, that we hire people based on character, not on skill. Because you can teach skills, but character is a very different thing to teach altogether. Well, you can't teach it, you can't change it, right? You know, the scales are very different, and the materials, some of them are different, but definitely in the way that we try and foster talent, I see a, a similarity, well, I hope to see a similarity with the way that Gordon McPhail do. My son caddies for me now as well, so um, I'm sort of keeping the family, the family tradition going and he's, he's been on the bag and we managed to win in India last year, so probably the proudest moment in my golfing career was to win with my son on the bag, so I know, how, I know how important sort of family values are. One of the hallmarks of some, a, a firm like Gordon McPhail is have a look at their staff and the longevity of how long people stay. We've got a wonderful community here of people who've been working in the mill for many, many years. Many have been working 20, 30, 40 years. They take tremendous pride from what we're making and that's critically important that there is that pride in the product uh, and they believe in what they're doing. I think the values we have help us and guide us as we move forward. Um, they're, a, they're a good foundation and benchmark as to the way we've done business in the past. Those values which are rooted in the business actually work really well in an international market as we're selling a product which is based on provenance, based on legacy and tradition. James Gordon was a very interesting man because he had a wealth of knowledge and then in being in business with, with McPhail that I think this can-do uh, attitude sort of pervaded and that's carried on. Consumers now are informed about whiskey more than probably at any point in the history of whiskey. They want more information and they want that to be accompanied by kind of almost a story. Because if the whiskey's well made, there's gonna be a great story behind it as well. But I think that element of transparency is something that, that's new or newer. And we're gonna see more and more of it over time. I think it's justifiable to say that George Urquhart was, might be termed, the father of single malt whisky. Mr George, he was quite a compassionate man. Uh, he did care about the people who worked for him. One of our drivers was on Sky making deliveries, and the ferry company, the employees, decided to have a lightning strike over the weekend. So the driver was stuck on Sky. There was no bridge at the time. So George got into the yacht. Still to the Kailakan picked up the lorry driver and the goods he still had to deliver and sailed into Plopton. How many 
company chairman. Would you find doing that? Not many, I don't think.